Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 6.2, Radian Measure and Angles on the Cartesian Plane. So if you remember from grade 11, we actually developed sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta in terms of y r, x r, and y over x. And we also talked about the primary trig ratios uh, reciprocals, so the reciprocal trig ratios. 1 over sine theta is cosec theta, 1 over cos theta is sec theta, and 1 over tan theta is cotan theta. Um, so I'm going to develop these definitions here, but if you'd like to skip it, um, you can go to the next section in the description below. Just click on the link. So these definitions arise from uh, defining the angle on the Cartesian plane. So we would start with this terminal arm. We go on the initial arm and we just take that terminal arm and we rotate it around the circle and you can see that it creates an angle. So if I want to make this angle right here theta, then I can find a point where it meets this circle, and we can call that point x, y. If you drop the perpendicular here, so that this is a right angle, you can see that the height would be y, and the length would be x. Um, and we can also see that if this is a circle, we're going to let this be the radius right here. So the radius is the hypotenuse. We can actually define the opposite and the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So you can see here from theta, the opposite is y. The adjacent right next to it is x. And the hypotenuse, which is across from the 90 degrees, is r. And using our definitions from SOHCAHTOA, we know that sine theta, sine, is opposite over hypotenuse which in this case is y over r. Cos theta, cos, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be x over r. And tan theta is opposite over adjacent. So in this case, it's y over x. And that's where we get these definitions right here in the top. And then when you flip them over, you'll get the reciprocals. So y over r flipped over is r over y, x over r is r over x, and y over x is x over y. So that's where we get these ratios. Okay, so let's talk about some of the ratios that you absolutely have to know. This is a chart that you're going to have to memorize. I will be drilling you on it. Um, so these are the special triangles right here, 30, 45, and 60. If you don't know them, you can watch the link in the description below. I have a video where I talk about the special triangles. Um, and I do it in degrees, but you should know it in radians as well. And we talked about how to convert degrees and radians in a previous class. So I'm just going to develop 0, and then I'm going to have you develop 90, 180, and 270, and see if you can find the correct answers for those. Okay, so let's do 0 radians. So if I have this unit circle, and I'm going to say that it's a unit circle, which means it has a radius of 1, then if I start at the initial arm and I go 0 radians, I'm going to go nowhere, right? So I'm going to end up back on the initial arm right here. And if this has a radius of 1, then I know that this point is actually at 1, 0. So I have my radius, and I actually have an x value, which is 1, and I have a y value, which is 0. So this is going to help us to find the sine, cos, and tan because um, I have already defined sine, cos, and tan based on x, y, and r, right? So let's see that, sine 0, and you'll see that I don't put degrees on radians because that indicates that it is a radian. Um, so sine 0 equals um, y over r, so in other words, 0 over 1, which is 0, cos 0 is equal to x over r, which is 1 over 1, or in other words, 1. And tan 0 is equal to y over x, which is 0 over 1, which gives us 0. So that's how we find the primary trig ratios for 0 radians. And then we can do it for the uh, reciprocal trig ratio. So cosec theta is equal to r over y. So here it's 1 over 0 which we know is undefined, um, so it has no value. Sec theta is equal to r over x, which is 1 over 1, so again this is 1, and cotan theta is equal to x over y, which is 0 
oh, 1 over 0, sorry, which is undefined again. So that is the reciprocal trig ratios for uh, 0 radians. So you can see that I filled that in for us right here with all of these um, trig ratios. And you might want to print this out so that you can um, also you know, fill in the chart. Um, so now I would encourage you to do 90, 180, 270. I know I already wrote the answers for 90, but let's see if you can develop it on your own. And then try 180 and 270. And um, I'm just going to give you a hint for the 90. It's again going to be with radius 1, but I'll be at this new point, and I'll let you try to find what that point is. Now when you do 180, or pi, um, you're going to have to use a point right here and think about what that point is and so forth okay so why don't you go ahead and pause the video right now and then I will come back to you and we will see if you got the right answers okay so hopefully you filled in the chart and you use these points to do it this is pi over 2 up here which is at uh, 0 1 pi has negative 1 0 and 3 pi over 2 has 0 negative 1 you can see the answers here um, and you can feel free to look at the chart and look for patterns there are a lot of patterns to be found um, for example the 90 and the 270 or pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 have very similar numbers but instead of being positive it's negative wherever you have a positive one so you know it's not that hard to memorize it it looks like a bit of an intimidating chart but you can you can get it done it's not it's not too bad and we're gonna start with fewer so I'll talk about that in class next all right, so we're going to have to do a, diff a few different types of questions here. Um, the first thing that we might have to do is determine the exact value of a trigonometric ratio. So the first thing we're going to do is find the quadrant. We're going to measure the angle from the x-axis, always off of the x-axis, and then we're going to use cast. And there is a video for the cast rule. If you want to look at that, you can. Um, so just click on the link right there, and you can find that. Um, so I'll just draw a cast for you right here, cast like this. And um, I'm just also going to add 0 pi over 2 pi and 3 pi over 2. Just a reminder also that, you know, pi over 2 is like 0 0.5 pi, pi is 1 pi, and 3 pi over 2 is 1.5 pi. Okay, and then as you go around again, you get 2 pi, um, you'd also get, you know, 2 pi plus 0 0.5, so 2.5 pi. Um, 3 pi and so forth as we go around and around the circle so you can you can always find which angle it is uh, which quadrant we're going to go into by looking at these numbers okay so even if you're not sure 5 pi over 4 you do not need to convert it to degrees you should look at 5 over 4 uh, 5 over 4 is 1.25 pi so you can see that that will be between 1 and 1.5 so I can immediately write that this isn't going to be in quadrant 3 because it's in quadrant 3 and I'm going to use cast that means that cos is going to be negative so I'm going to an write my answer as negative cos and then I'm going to write the um, related acute angle which is actually easier than when you do degrees because basically you just get rid of the number in the numerator and you keep the denominator so it's going to be cos pi over 4 see that I just got rid of the 5 and how I do that is just figure out which quadrant and then add the put plus or minus right there so cos pi over 4 I know cos pi over 4 is root 2 over 2 so the answer is negative root 2 over 2 so you do the same thing for this one so if you want to pause the video and figure it out, pause it right now. And I'm going to do it. <laughs> so 11 pi over 6, um, I know that's really close to 2 because 12 pi over 6 is 2. So I'm going to do um, quadrant 4 here. And because it's cosec, I know that that is 1 over sine. So sine is negative in this quadrant, so I'll write negative uh, cosec pi over 6 and if you remember what cosec pi over 6 is it's actually 2 so the answer is negative 2 just like that okay so the last type of question we're going to solve trig equations that involve radians so we're going to find the angle and we're given the ratio this is the exact opposite of the type that we were just doing and just as a sidebar I want to um, just tell you that usually I do ratios and I'll round them to four decimal places when I do radians two decimal places sides one decimal place and degrees to the nearest degree the whole, nearest whole number that's just because it keeps it nice and clean it's easier to tell the difference between the those four things so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my related acute angle which I usually label as beta 
Um, so that's the designated letter for that. Tan beta equals 7 over 24. This is going to give me a quadrant 1 answer, and it's always consistent in the calculator. You do want to make sure that you are in radians on your calculator. I know mine, ha I have to go to setup, and then I click degrees, and then it tells me, you know, which one I want, I what options I have. Usually you have three options, degree, radian, and gradient. So sometimes your calculator will just have a D, an R, and a G and you have to pick one of those. Uh, some calculators have degree buttons, um, so you just gotta look for it on your calculator. And if you're the type of person who is passively sitting back watching these videos and not writing things down, this is the time to get out your calculator, pause the video right now, because you need to make sure you're very comfortable with your calculator and you're gonna be able to get this done on a quiz or a test, okay? So when you type it into your calculator using your brackets for the seven over 24, you should get that beta is equal to 0.28 radians and again I'm just rounding to two decimal places it's really easy to see and I just write rad there so it's really clear for me um, and then you have to think about which quadrant it's in so we used our calculator to find the really acute angle it used cast to find the answers so we're going to use cast you can see that my original has a negative so I know that I am going to be in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4 so I'm going to write that down and I will take off marks if you don't write this down so just do it um, it keeps it nice and clean, helps you to make sure you get the right answer, so it benefits you too. And so we know that in quadrant 2, it's going to be pi minus beta, and you just type it into your calculator, and you should get um, 2.86 radians. And for theta in quadrant 4, we're doing 2 pi minus beta, which is um, 6.00 radians. And those are our two solutions right there, okay? I only need to do two solutions because you can see that I am limited from 0 to 2 pi. Um, if you have a question where we have no limitation, like this one, we're actually going to have to find infinite solutions. So let's try this question. If you like, you can pause the video and try um, B and C. Uh, C has a little extra thing added onto it, so see if you can do those two things. If not, you can follow along with me. Um, again, I'm just going to change to the related acute angle, so cos beta equals 1 over 3, and then I find that beta is equal to 1.23. Um, so again, I can just draw this out, cast. If you don't need to draw it out, that's fine, totally fine. Just make sure that you write quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. And then we can find the solution. So in quadrant 1, theta is equal to beta, so it's 1.23 radians. In quadrant 4, it should be 2 pi minus beta, so it is equal to 5.35. Oh, no, sorry, 5.05. I was looking at a different question, radians. And if we want to do the infinite number, it's actually going to be 1.23. And then we can add as many rotations as we like in order to add those rotations, we're going to add 2 pi k, because one rotation is 2 pi, so we'll write k in z, because it has to be an integer, and we'll do the same for the quadrant 4 answer, 5.05 plus 2 pi k, k in z, and you can find as many answers as you want by just adding 2 pi's to these, an these answers right here. Okay, so let's do the last question. This one's really similar, except you'll notice, of course, that we have a seek, which makes it slightly more difficult, but also it says to find the exact value of tan theta. Now, to find the exact value of tan theta, what you should not do is type this into your calculator, find theta, and then find tan. That's going to give you a estimated value for tan. Um, so what we need to do is we actually can do this before we find the angle. We're going to do seek theta is equal to, and we know that seek is 1 over cos, so this is actually equal to the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So in this case, the hypotenuse is 7, and the adjacent is 3. And also, you'll notice that it says pi to 2 pi. So when I'm looking at my cast, which is important because it says it's negative, and I have to figure out which quadrant it's in, um, pi to 2 pi is actually only in quadrants 3 and 4, and because it's negative, I want cos to be negative. That means it is in quadrant 3, okay? That means that 
when I do find tan, tan will be positive, okay? So you have to find the positive value for that. So let's do, let's find the opposite. The opposite squared plus the adjacent squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. That's Pythagorean theorem. So we can just type that in. Opposite is equal to, and it ends up being 49 minus 9, uh, 7 squared minus 3 squared, which is 40. Uh, sorry, the square root of those. Oops. And so we find that actually that the opposite, if we um, would simplify this, is going to end up being 2 root 10. Okay, so to find tan theta, we can see that tan theta is going to equal positive 2 root 10 over the adjacent, 3. Okay, so that's how you do that part of the question. And we're also going to find the angle to the nearest degree because it asks us to. So again, you're just going to do exactly the same procedure as before. We're going to do seek beta equals positive 7 over 3, or in other words, cos of beta is equal to 3 over 7, because um, seek isn't on your calculator, so we just flip it upside down. If you type that into your calculator, you actually find that beta is equal to 0 0.93, and usually we would say cos is negative, so it's got to be in quadrant 3 or quadrant 2, but because of this range right here, pi to 2 pi, we know that it can't be in quadrant 2. So it will only be in quadrant 3, and we'll only have one solution. So in quadrant 3, theta is equal to pi plus beta. So this is equal to 5.35 radians, and that's our solution. So we did a few things today. We talked about how to find um, the ratios for 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. We talked about how to find the ratio given the, um, given the angle. We f talked about how to find the angle based on the ratio. And we also talked about how to find the ratio given another ratio. Okay? So bring any questions you have to class, and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.